Why returning to the moon is so difficult since we've done it before? The last human landing on the moon was in 1972. Since then, technology has advanced dramatically and more and more countries have expanded their space programs, but humans have yet to return to the moon. What are the causes? Let us investigate. The main motivation. To discover the factors that led to the moon mission, we must go back to the end of the 1960s. During the Cold War that followed World War II, the United States and the Soviet Union engaged in the space race, a tenacious competition between the two countries whose ultimate goal was to land a citizen of the nation on the moon's surface. The United States would emerge victorious from this conflict in which both nations aimed to display their military and technological dominance over the foe. More than an end in itself, the mission to the moon demonstrated to the world who would determine the pace of the international political agenda for the rest of the century. The goal of reaching the moon was more political than scientific. Would we have reached the moon in 1969 in a different historical environment purely for scientific reasons? Everything seems to point to the contrary. As previously stated, the Americans were motivated to send a human crewed expedition to our satellite due to the political situation. Without the rivalry with the USSR, it would have been difficult to imagine the American government mobilizing the nearly 400,000 people who participated in and dedicated themselves to the Apollo program over the 14-year period, the equivalent today of approximately $120,000 million. Today, it is unthinkable that the United States government would sponsor a journey of this magnitude at such a tremendous expense to the country. The High Cost of Stepping on the Moon Again Reaching the moon was a difficult achievement to accomplish because, in addition to the technological problems we shall explore later, there were also economic challenges. President Donald Trump signed legislation in March 2017 that provides NASA with an annual budget of roughly $19.5 billion, which has now increased to nearly $20 billion. However, while this appears to be an astronomical figure, it is not when the total is divided among all of the agency's divisions and all of the ambitious projects such as the James Webb Space Telescope, the Space Launch System, and remote missions to the Sun, Jupiter, Mars, the Asteroid Belt, the Kuiper Belt, and the edge of the Solar System. Furthermore, NASA's budget is rather limited in comparison to its predecessors. Since 1960, the fiscal allocation for the American space program has risen reaching a record of 5.3% of the national budget in 1965. However, five years later, in the early 1970s and having resolved the space race in favor of the Americans, NASA experienced a large budget cut for a variety of reasons including the loss of political interest in the moon and the Apollo 13 missions accident. Because of these occurrences, the Apollo 18, 19, and 20 missions were canceled, leaving Apollo 17 as the last human crewed journey to the moon. As a result, NASA's budget has been below 1% over the last 40 years, and for the last 15 years, it has been trending toward 0.4% of the federal budget. In other words, if we haven't returned to the moon by now, it's due to a lack of interest on the side of governments and a lack of economic resources. What happened to technology? Today, NASA has the new rocket SLS Space Launch System, which will be the successor to the Atlas V, which was responsible for transporting astronauts to the moon. This rocket made its debut with the launch of the Artemis I mission, which was a success. Successfully transporting the Orion capsule to the moon's orbit, which will be the new spacecraft that will transport humans to the lunar surface. Many people were surprised to learn that the Artemis I mission was canceled twice before launch owing defaults in the rocket's fuel chambers necessitating further testing before the ship could be launched. But why was the SLS launch so difficult? Isn't NASA supposed to have decades of experience? The reality is that the Apollo mission's launches were not easy either. As you may recall, the mission that managed to land successfully was the 11th. That is to say, 10 missions did not get it for various reasons the majority of which were cancellations due to weather or technical issues. Some Apollo missions never even took off, but this is rarely mentioned. It is also worth noting that despite having the experience of the Apollo spacecraft, NASA had several difficulties getting the space shuttles to take off. 
The most prevalent issues during shuttle launches were nearly always with the fueling systems, which were not the same as those used by Saturn V rockets and Apollo spacecraft. The shuttles were extraordinarily complicated craft that combined the power of a rocket with the aerodynamics of an airplane and featured engines that used both solid and liquid fuel. Because of this intricacy, all launch attempts failed technically. According to the record of launch cancellations, shuttle launches had the most cancellations. Some were canceled up to five times before lifting off successfully. The Problem of Fuel Supply the Artemis 1 mission was canceled twice before it successfully took off due to technical issues in the fuel system. These failures were the same ones that caused the Apollo missions to be aborted and the shuttles to suffer from. For more than 50 years, fuel leaks have been the most prevalent failure in rockets and one of the primary causes for takeoff cancellation. But why is this problem still present today? The problem is caused by the rocket fuel, hydrogen. This is the simplest and lightest element. It is abundant on Earth but it is combined with other elements, thus molecular separation procedures such as electrolysis are required to acquire pure hydrogen. Hydrogen is a very light element, so much so that a single gram of material takes billions of hydrogen atoms. Hydrogen is so light that it can pass through any opening, no matter how small. In a normal atmosphere and at normal temperatures, this is not normally an issue, but leaks are far more likely to occur in a cold environment and at high pressures. These are the settings in which space rockets function. To keep a rocket's fuel tanks full of fuel until launch, they must be permanently connected to terrestrial cooling systems via cables and pipes. Some connections detach from the bridge during takeoff. This is where leaks frequently occur since these connections cannot be fastened tightly and it is difficult to avoid leaks while they are at high pressures and shallow temperatures. In short, rockets struggle to take flight because hydrogen is utilized as fuel. But if this is the issue, why not use a different fuel? Reusing Rockets NASA continues to employ hydrogen fuel due to its high efficiency as the element that offers greater thrust with less weight. Another crucial reason is the law. We're not talking about physical laws here, but rather political ones. In 2010, the United States Congress mandated that NASA continue to use the shuttle rockets as part of the SLS rocket program. In fact, you may not realize it. But the SLS engines are the same as those used by the space shuttles at the time. As the budget was reduced, Congress urged that in order to optimize resources, NASA should employ the contracts, investments, budget, labor, industrial base, and existing infrastructure in the United States that were used for the space shuttle in the new SLS program. Similarly, the Orion one would be reused as would the existing propulsion systems such as the liquid fuel engines that produce so many leaks, the external storage tank, and the solid fuel engines. All of this was reused and adapted for the new Artemis One project. In other words, the Artemis project which aims to send new people to the moon employs the same technology, rockets, engines, and launch platform that space shuttles did more than a decade ago. That's why returning to the moon is so difficult. Aside from touch displays, the technology of the Artemis One program isn't much that different from what we had 50 years ago. Furthermore, arguably the most compelling reason humans haven't gone to the moon is the most obvious. There hasn't been a need to go back. The Apollo missions were so prolific that, aside from the various experiments conducted on the moon, so many samples of lunar material were obtained that many of them remain unstudied by scientists even now. To this, we must add that in the following years, NASA's priorities will be Skylab, the laboratory in Earth orbit, and sending probes and satellites to many other parts of the solar system. And perhaps the issue is, why should we return to the moon when there is so much to discover on the other planets? There is nothing to criticize NASA for in view of current scientific discoveries. Today, we use robots to explore Mars, discover new solar systems virtually every day, and detect phenomena such as gravitational waves that were previously purely theoretical. As we've seen, there are various reasons why we haven't been to the moon since 1972 and none of them have anything to do, for example, with the bizarre conspiracy ideas that have been floating on social media for several years. We haven't returned yet, but that doesn't mean we won't. NASA's Artemis project, which aspires to put a man back on the moon, will mark the horizon of the next human crew journey to our satellite.
And it's possible that like Neil Armstrong in 1969, a woman will take a new stride on the surface of our natural satellite on this occasion. Alright everyone, that is all for this video. Thanks for watching. Is there anything you like to say? Please tell us in the comments section below and remember to like and subscribe.